hope and pray that humanity would uh, come to the place of, of recognizing God's purpose and plan and, and will for mankind. Uh, it involves uh, choice, of course, because this is the reality that all humans face, is that as soon as we're born into this world, we're going to be confronted with the choice of deciding our destiny. And we're going to either accept uh, the negative things that the enemy promotes, or we're going to accept the positive things that our God and Father promotes. That's the only two choices. We don't have a multiple choice situation here. It's all about deciding what path we're going to take. Jesus put it very, very clearly. He says there's, a, there's two roads, you know, <laughs> two gates. One is wide and broad, and it's, that's the picture of the world system, the influence that the enemy has on the world. It's broad and wide, and lots of people are just falling into that gate there, you know. It's awful to think about that. And then the other road is narrow and defined. It's, it's accessible, but you have to make a choice to go in that direction to make sure you get in. The other road is so wide, you just kind of, you know, you don't even have to try. You kind of fall into that one. And uh, mankind needs to decide for themselves. And, and the sad situation is that our world is, is deciding to follow the other side. And now we have a, a lot of problems. And I think our problems are multiplied in our generation because of the access to information that we have. Because in past generations, there wasn't a, a, a lot of information that flowed around, so it was mostly small communities that kind of managed their own lives, you know. But now, I mean, it's, we're influenced from all around the world. Something happens, like in Beirut the other day, did you see that explosion? Oh my goodness. I mean, the crater that it left was huge, you know. And uh, right away, we heard about it, you know. So we are, we are well-informed people, and... And uh, the airways are filled with information. And we can get information through our televisions, our radios, our, our little smartphones, you know. And, man, we're just updated all the time and bombarded with so much information. And, uh, and I know it's the enemy's plan to overwhelm us so that we don't seek out the perfect will of God. Because he wants to distract us, even Christians. He wants to keep Christians distracted because when we're distracted, we're not as effective as we need to be. So he hits us big time with all that stuff, trying to uh, disrupt what God wants us to do. Uh, now, of course, what he wants us to do is to help save this lost and dying world. Because so many are choosing the wrong path and have decided that they're going to choose their own will. And it's not really their own will. We know what it's like. There was a time in our lives where we decided... We're going to do things our way, and we, we had this plan and this purpose, and we said, well, this is going to be my life, and here's where I'm going with it. I'm making my own choices and my own person, deciding for myself. Kind of like when we became teenagers, huh? <laughs> yeah. At that point, we just do it all. I mean, we're just, we're in command and control. I'm going to make my own choices. I do what I want, when I want, and find out pretty quick that it doesn't work out that way because bad choices bring consequences and brings discipline <laughs> and all those things. So, you know, it, it, this doesn't work out. We, we don't run our own destiny. We don't. We're going to serve somebody. The Bible says we are going to serve somebody. We're either going to serve God or we're going to serve mankind and the mammon and the devil system, you know. So those are the only two choices that we have. So we as Christians, I think we need to make that loud and clear to people uh, to help them understand that they're involved in serving somebody. You know, Not, Don't believe the lie that you're serving yourself because that, that doesn't happen. I was thinking about this this morning, how when we're born into this world, we're like a, like a brand new uh, computer. And all we have is the basic operating system in there. All we have is the, the, the few technical things like the, we have the windows and the uh, outlook and different things that are pre-planted in there, you know, into that computer. And, uh, and then there was a lot of space, a lot of space in those hard drives. And that space is going to get filled up. But we come into this world, we're little kids, and we're basically, our, our programming is uh, cry when you're hungry, 
cry when you need to be changed, right? <laughs> cry when you're not feeling good, you know, and pretty much that's all we got. We got the basics, you know, uh, for survival. And, uh, and then comes the influence. Little by little, we start receiving the information from the world. Hopefully, good parents bring good information into that kid's life and it, it promotes a good life. But there's more than parents involved. In our society, there are so many things. And that one-eyed monster that looks back at us every day on our TVs you know, <laughs> has a lot of influence. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of parents put their little kids right in front of that TV so that they can go clean the bathroom or whatever they're going to do. And that's an influence that's taking place right there, you know. And, uh, and sometimes the cartoon channels, but some of the cartoons are kind of bad. I mean, I can't follow along with some of that stuff. Even the, I didn't watch very much of it, but the SpongeBob, I thought that was kind of bad, you know? I said, how, how do you let kids watch this stuff, you know? And now they got all kinds of other things that are going on, and, and uh, I mean, the cartoons are kind of gross, you know? About how they, they're always with slime and <laughs> just terrible stuff, you know? And that's an influence to a, a little child that's got a, 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 a area of the computer that is being filled with these things. So now that it gets in, it's going to stay there until a miracle takes place. And that miracle is brought from our God through the Son, Jesus Christ. But without that, all that garbage just stays in there. It goes nowhere. And so when people think that, no, I'm my own man, I'm deciding, no. You have all this influence. Your whole life has been influenced by all these things and you just accepted that influence. And you allowed it to program your mind to think the way you think. That's what has happened. It is brainwashing in the negative sense to the extreme. It is manipulation and coercion and whatever other negative term you can look at that has happened to us from what the world has brought to us. No, we're not our own person. No, we're going to serve somebody. Yeah. And that negative influence right now is, uh, is causing most of humanity to submit to it. Yeah, there's a lot of slaves. A lot of slaves to that system. And people think, no, I'm not a slave, I'm free. And I, no, you're a slave to the system. You're going to be a slave to that system, or you're going to be a slave to righteousness. That's the only two choices that we have. And we must decide which way we're going to go. And we need to make this uh, very, very, uh, this very idea at the forefront so people can look at it and understand. Because when we're doing the program, uh, we had guys that have went through a very negative, very negative uh, life. And a lot of negative programming, you know, it was it was terrible. I mean, they they were getting to a point where, in some of their lives, if a person looked at them in a, a certain way, they called it mad dogging. I'm not sure what that means, but <laughs> but if, if somebody mad dogged them, that was enough to go fight that person. Just a person looking at them. I don't know how. You have to do your face or whatever, but that mad dog look at a person was enough to start a fight. And they had to defend their status. Because if somebody mad dogs you, you have to deal with it. You know? Programmed to think like that. You know, rational people don't think that way. You know, But if you accept that influence, it's going to dominate your life. And you'll think that way. See? And God wants to change that. He wants to help us so that we don't have to think that way. Because if we're a slave of righteousness, I guarantee you, you're going to be free. That's what we all want. We want freedom. And if you really want to be free, you'll submit to the things of God and His will. Let's read here in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse... Uh, did I put one up there? One and two, I think. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Every one of us on this earth are going to recognize at some point in our lives that God's will for us is the best thing that we can have on this earth. Now, we may fight it. Some of us fought it for many years. We didn't want to give in to that. We wanted to do things our own way and decide our own path and all that. We thought we were in control. And then somewhere down the line, we found out we're not in control. And our lives were falling apart. And we were suffering through life and not enjoying life. And things were miserable. But we thought we could do it on our own. We can't. We belong to God. We're His kids. And there's, there's no escaping that. We are part of his family, and he's going to do everything he can possible without a breaking his promise to us of a free will. But he'll do everything else possible to help us to recognize that his will for our life is the best thing for us. And it is. So in order to get there, it's going to take a, a little bit of a process. And he says, he said here, that we should present our lives a living sacrifice. God is asking us to give up our will. To give up the plans and the purposes that we in our own little capacity up here have to think about. He's asking us to lay that aside and bring it to Him and bring ourselves to Him as a living sacrifice. Giving up everything we thought, everything we were pre-programmed with, Everything we think that's our thought and our understanding of life, he's asking us to sacrifice all of that. He says, it's your, our reasonable service. This is where God reasons with us and tells us, when we get to this point, we will have life and life more abundant. The things that we accept in the path as truth, those are limitations. Those are the things that hold us back. Those are the things that are causing the problems in our world today. That old, some preachers call it stinking thinking. We thought those things were true. They're not true. They're not real. They're lies built upon lies and more lies. You know, uh, for the longest time, it seemed like in my life, words, negative words especially, directed at me were very harmful. Very hurtful, you know. And we all go through this, you know. People have an opinion, and they like to express it. <laughs> so they'll say very negative things about you to try to condemn you, to try to make you look bad, or just to be downright mean, you know. They say these terrible, awful things. And boy, man, it used to get to me. It really would irritate me, you know. And, uh, and even as a kid, you know, it turned into a point where... I, I had to, it was fist fight about it, you know, because things were so bad and hurt me so much. I had to defend myself, you know, uh, because they, I believed it. I let that dominate my life to the point that I had to fight this other little kid, you know. Terrible. Yeah, our problems come from that way of thinking. But today, somebody says something bad about me. I don't care. <laughs> what, why should I care? You know, why should I care what their thoughts about me are? You know, and I, I don't, I don't bow down to them. I don't go to their church to worship them. You know, so what matters to me is God, what He thinks. That's what matters to me, not what the others out there are saying. Because even, even if they're saying these things, I know they're a lie, because I know myself. Right. So if they're saying that. I'm stealing money from the ministry. I know that's not happening. So they can say it all they want. I know that it's not happening. You know? So why should I allow that opinion of me that I'm a fraud or a fake or whatever they want to say, why should I allow that to dominate my life? I'm not going to let that. Because I know that's from the devil. That's the, that's the negative force that's at work in this world. So I, I will not accept that. But when God says something, I'm going to pay attention. Because if I'm doing something wrong and God points it out to me, I want to correct it. You know, if I get convicted of doing something wrong, I want him 
uh, uh, to convict me so I can straighten things out. Because that's God's will for my life. He doesn't want any one of us to carry the guilt and pain and shame of sin. He wants us to be free from all that. See, see how God's perfect will is so much better than what the world has to offer. We are, we are uh, robbing ourselves of the best thing possible when we accept those things of the world. And here he tells us, do not be conformed. Don't, don't allow all that to form you into something that you're not. What the world does is pulls us away from God as far as it can from God. That's what it does. But see, it can't. The reality is we're children of God. That never changes. No matter how much we conform to the world, God still says, that's my child. And I will do everything I can possible to make sure my child has an opportunity to live under my perfect will for his life. This is important stuff. God's will for our lives is so, so important. And when we accept it, we are the ones that are going to be blessed for it. He says, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Praise God. Now let's look here at the Lord's Prayer right quick. I got it here in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse, verse 9. Oops, one more page. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Oops, I'm in John. I wonder. <laughs> here we go. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants and desires for us to have a good life on this earth. He has pre-planned it for us. And all we have to do is present ourselves a living sacrifice to Him. God will accept us. And God will work with us each and every day to continue to prove His perfect will for our lives. And we are the beneficiaries of that. We get to enjoy uh, uh, love, hope, peace, uh, all the fruits of the Spirit. Let me read them all. Love, joy, peace, patience. Kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All those blessings are God's will for our lives. Every one of them. Even when we are struggling through situations in life, relational issues, financial issues, health issues, whatever it might be, God's presence, the fruits of the Spirit, are with us even during those times. While everybody else has problems in their lives and they're freaking out and they have no hope, they feel like everything's bad and falling apart, you know, we have this because that's God's will for our life. Is it God's will for their life too? Yes, absolutely. He doesn't want them to have to struggle through life alone. He wants to share his goodness with every single person. So we consider, you know, we're going to have to serve somebody. I guarantee serving God is the way to go. He is the way. His whole plan and purpose in the Bible right here, the guide, the directions for living, Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. <laughs> yeah, right here. This guide right here will promote the best life that you can have. This is it. This is not a book that puts limitations on you. This is a book that takes the limitations off. By living by this standard right here gives us the true freedom we desire. Uh, Jesus said in the word here that, that if we want freedom, this is what gives us freedom. The Son sets us free. Accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior does not put us into bondage. It liberates us to truly live. And he wants us all to live. I know some may be watching this video and thinking, oh, uh, I'm no good. I heard a guy yesterday. It was awful to hear this guy say this by himself. He's over at Allsup's, and he works at Allsup's, but he was there just buying stuff, and he's buying tickets, lottery tickets. 
He says, I don't know why I do this. He's talking to another lady. And, I don't know why I do this. I, I never win. I never, I never win. And then out of his own mouth, he says, man, I don't even know why I do this. I'm a loser. I'm just a loser. Confessing that with his own mouth. You know? What kind of limitations does that bring to a person's life? He wasn't a very happy guy. But still, he put his money on the counter and bought them tickets. You know, Hoping for something good to happen. When, in reality, when we present ourselves a living sacrifice to our God, the good happens. Missing out on it. Thinking that if that hits on that lottery ticket, everything's going to be good. No, that ain't going to be good. It's only going to be good when we come to realize that we need to come back home to our Father. That's the only time that life is good. All the other times, you're going to be up and down, up and down, up and down. You're going to look back at your life and you're not going to like what you see. You missed out on so much of God's goodness. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you make that choice and you decide to give your life to God, He will make the difference in your life. He will not let you down. He will lift you up. You're not a loser. No. You are so important to God that He took His own Son and sent him down to this earth to live here just like we do. He walked the, the dirt roads, stubbed his toe on rocks, and lived out, off the land, went, used the restroom behind a rock. All these things. He, he, he experienced humanity through his son Jesus Christ. And he sent his son here for the purpose of telling us about his good news for us. His plan and his purpose for us. His will for us. He came and testified of the Father's will. And then he suffered and died on the cross so that we could have an opportunity to receive Jesus as Lord and Him be the sacrifice for our sins so that we could be free from the bondage of sin. Yeah, Jesus came to rock our world. He really did. He made it possible for us to cast off all that influence from the world. All those things that those negative issues that kept us down. He gave us a place of true freedom when we accepted Him as Lord and Savior. Yeah, that's our reasonable service. Just give our lives to God. It's, we'll be in good hands. It's the best hands to be in. I hope that you'll consider this message today and accept Jesus as your Lord. And for us Christians, it's a reminder of, you know, this is the message that God wants to promote. He wants people to come into His kingdom. He's going to accept them all, every one of us. Every sinner, no matter how awful we think they are, in a man's opinion, in God's opinion, is a child that is straight away. So let's continue to reach out to those with the love of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for uh, reminding us of your perfect will for our lives. And, and we as Christians, we reflect back on our own lives. And, and we look at the many, many times that your will has worked out so good for us. You are so true to your word that you, you, you turn everything together for our good because we love you and we're called according to your purpose. Even the most negative things that have happened in our lives have brought forth good fruit. Thank you, Father, for never leaving us and never forsaking us. Father, there are some that might be watching this video today that have never received this kind of goodness into their lives. But, Father, maybe now they're, they're thinking about it. So touch their hearts, Father. Help them to understand that you have a great love for them and that you truly want to set them free and give them a good life. Let that ring in their hearts today, Father. We love you so much. We thank you for this day. We'll continue to honor you each and every day and promote your goodness to this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. We're dismissed. <laughs> Amen.